and we're kind of like already in the flow of things so we're ready to just like jump right in speaking of jumping right in welcome back to volumes and today i'm with greg hall and we're going to speak a bit about mental health and what you've been up to lately and yeah so would you like to start off by explaining to me a bit about your series that you created which is pretty much done i think you're missing one episode am i right uh yeah this is the one to be uploaded left. i don't know how loud i am right now but i'm just gonna speak on it um so yeah i did a closer perfect is that okay okay yeah, yeah that's way better because i'm actually heal myself way yeah better, um yeah i did a nine video series where i did three videos about straight edge culture or sobriety for those that are not aware of what straight edge culture is three videos on veganism and three videos on mental health and i did that over the plan was to do it over the course of like nine months but it took like just under a year to do which i still think is all right yeah, yeah it's the first series that i've done and i had a lot of fun with it and it's absolutely amazing oh is yeah. it you should, cool I'll, I'll link it in the description it's great it really is i think it's very eye-opening you speak with really interesting people mm -hmm. uh, i definitely recommend it i just kind of wanted to do something a bit different because i kind of feel that when it comes to like interviews and that the only ones that we really see are kind of like mainstream media ones where it's like billy eilish has been spoken to about mm -hmm. how she had a million followers last year and now yeah. she has like a couple million now and it's yeah. just like wow this is so not relatable in any yeah. sense so I wanted to talk about things that were important to me, but were also accessible to other people as well. Yeah. But yeah, I had a lot of fun with it, to be fair. Yeah, it, it really is great. So question on that is like, how did uh, how did you pinpoint and find the people you wanted to speak with on each sort of like individual subject? Um, the way that I found people, I, when when I first started doing it, it was kind of, it was a pretty difficult start to be honest but yeah. as we got into like the flow of doing it more people were coming forward being like i actually like your content i want to be part of it so that's quite good but with the first ones that i was doing the first video that we did was with yeah the first video that we did with was yeah i can't even say that the first video that we did was with jack mcdade who does the audio for us now which is great that actually panned out really well and um i put up a thing on instagram just being like if anybody would like to do a video talking about one of these three things, get in touch. And then Jack took part in it. We spoke to him about mental health and how he uses video games as a form of escapism to help him with his mental health. He had a hard time growing up and video games were kind of something that was always there for yeah. him. And I think that's quite relatable for some people. Yeah, it's yeah, relatable absolutely. for me in a sense as well. And after that, a lot of his friends kind of caught on to it and they were saying that they would like to be involved. And then it kind of just like spread from there and it was really good. And the the follower account that we had on Instagram was growing as well. So mm -hmm. like where our reach was getting bigger at the same time. So it was it was actually really, really good that it worked out. But in terms of how I actually cherry picked the particular people to be on it is that I feel like I've got some really interesting friends. Like right. um for one of the mental health ones I spoke to Peyton Rose Monteau, who is a trans woman a musician and I've known Peyton for years, like pre-transition and I've kind of gotten to know her like more and more recently because I feel like I'm quite an accepting person. Mm -hmm. I don't really see the point in being narrow minded because like I think that as soon as you become narrow minded you put these walls up and you're yeah. you're stopping yourself from learning. Yeah, definitely. And like I'm always craving new, different, a challenge, like something something to learn about essentially. So I spoke to Peyton about her transition and it, it was really eye opening, it was really insightful. And then we got a lot of views based on that. A lot of them were negative because um <laughs> maybe because some people are narrow minded. And it also turns out that like a month later something happened when Peyton had to go into hiding because of um turfs essentially found out that um Peyton had transitioned and Oh. Peyton basically put up a status on Twitter saying if you get handed one of these leaflets from I'm not gonna say who it is because I don't know who's aligned with it or anything like that she put up a status saying if you get one of these leaflets from these people um rip it up and throw it in the bin because they do not they do not align with trans rights or anything like that and then from there Peyton had to go into hiding Peyton had to cancel a bunch of her shows that she was playing and yeah that's quite intense it was so oh intense God. but like all that I had to do was disable comments and then oh, yeah. I, so like we got like heaps of views off that it was it was yeah. a strange circumstance that kind of drew a lot of attention to yeah. us and then from that we had people that were straight edge getting in touch with us they wanted to talk about sobriety we had people at shows coming up to us saying that they wanted to take part and talk about veganism just friends of friends really it kind of mm. like spread like wildfire so, um did it turn out the way you kind of wanted it to turn out yeah are you proud of the content you've created i am 
Yeah, I'd say that yeah. I'm proud of it because I had a very specific um, visualization of it in my head and I'm quite happy that it went the way that it did. Yeah. I got to speak to a good mix of... Um, I got to, uh, I got to speak to a good mix of people that are um, all amazing people that all have like completely different views and that like um, my view on straight edge culture is because is basically based on what I grew up with a mm-hmm. lot in, from going to shows and um, my upbringing where um, my dad drank a lot my stepdad drank a lot my mom drank a lot and that was like my main reason for like cutting out drinking yeah. and going sober but then i met other people who chose to stop drinking because um it was causing them mental health issues and then there was other people that basically stopped drinking as well because it was something that they identified as identified as like something that was killing them right. so like there were so many different ways and then with the veganism ones as well, I got to speak to people about the environment. I got to speak to people about low waste. I got to talk to people about um, the impact that traveling can have on the planet, as well as um, how other cultures around the world get to how they embrace veganism in their way. And it was just quite nice to kind of have a, a westernized idea of what veganism is like, but also get to see what the Middle East can be mm-hmm. like and hearing about people's travels yeah and then with mental health as well i'm just rambling on because i'm totally in a flow right now i'm loving it um with the mental health ones they were quite good because we got to talk to peyton about her transition we got to speak to jack about his um his upbringing and how video games were a absolute savior for her yeah an absolute savior for him and then we also spoke to um cat mcbride who spoke to us about call it culture and how people should kind of pay for doing pretty shitty things right in music scenes and stuff yeah have you got something like future projects for that kind of brand um i want to keep the feel healed going for as long as i possibly can yeah. because like i'm enjoying it it's yeah. fun it's and a, it's great it's a great means for me to like actually speak to people make friends hang out organize things and that it's good because like i kind of feel that people people are I'm trying to think of the best way to actually describe this. I think that interest, being interesting gets people interested. And I think that that's kind of like something that I've always wanted to live by. That I think that if someone is providing something, then that is a means for people to basically come to it. Like it's supply and demand. In a yeah, sense. Yeah. If I wasn't supplying anything, then people are not going to demand anything from me. And I'm quite an attention craving person. And I like people talking to me. And I like validation and stuff like that pretty much like most people but i feel that instagram and this whole brand of to feel healed has been really beneficial for me in general i don't want to keep going for as long as possible but i think the direction that i want to go in next is um i've recorded a couple of podcasts right and i'm still waiting for the audio back oh which is quite <laughs> fun um but the next thing that i'm planning on doing is uh, i want to do like a men's mental health series right i thought about filming it all but then I thought that I could just do it on a podcast, so I'm kind of hit on like a different platform. Right. So I want to do a men's mental health um, podcast. I don't want to like exclude any other genders or anything like that, but men's mental health is something that I can relate to yeah. fully, and yeah. it's something that I really want to target because uh, I work in construction, and I think it's one in what is it? It's like two in five people in the construction industry um, have mental health issues, right. but about maybe thirty percent of that, thirty uh, about thirty percent of that mi- minority actually comes forward and does something about it, because it's an industry that is so built on toxic masculinity, yeah, and yeah. there's very little um, female intervention. Right. So it's a lot of men basically acting like big men thinking they're the best and stuff like that and it's all it's very competitive yeah and so, a lot of feelings being suppressed yes a lot yeah. of feelings being suppressed and a lot of people don't want to show weakness whatsoever so a lot of people um suppress their feelings and in the time that i've actually been like a mental health first aider certified by the nhs which i'm so happy about um i've spoken to maybe three or four different guys in construction that have basically told me that um, they've either been having suicidal thoughts or they're curious about depression or they've wanted to talk to me about their panic attacks or they've wanted to speak about how um, anxiety and stress is basically like invaded their lives right so it's it's just been interesting to kind of see that massive contrast and actually get to understand that that minority truly exists 
Yeah. So that's kind of what's driving me to do this whole podcast series on men's mental health. That's amazing. Yeah, brilliant. Um, we'll definitely link that up when you've got it. Yeah, when I've got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, could you tell me a bit about how your mental health has been since the last time we did a podcast till now Ooh, and okay. that sort of journey? Okay, so my mental health has totally gone down the pan maybe about three or four times. Uh, no, probably more than that, to be honest. Um, I kind of feel that like, I'm constantly trying to reinvent myself in that and I put so much pressure on myself that if something doesn't go my way, I don't necessarily throw a tantrum or get upset about it, but I get disappointed in myself mm. for not achieving right. because I'm very focused on making things work and trying to be the best that I possibly can so I can be the best that I possibly can for other people. But yeah. I feel that my mental health is kind of <clears throat> taken a number of hits from um from like in from my job to like personal life and stuff like that as well like i'm i'm in a really happy relationship and i like where i live and i've got two cats and like but it's just been like um i, I got diagnosed with invasive thoughts automatic negative thoughts which sounds completely not really made up because it doesn't have one of these fancy names so i um, automatic negative thoughts uh, invasive thoughts and uh, an anxiety disorder right but i've only had one session with a psychiatrist so there's no way of us actually figuring out what strain of anxiety that is so at the okay. moment it's basically just like uh the broad term it's, of it's just like you have anxiety yeah. but we don't know what kind of sense it is yeah so um there's that um i'm now on two sets of medication and i'm trying to explore as much as possible into finding ways to reduce anxiety in my life because it's right. gone to the point now that I have anxiety every day. Right. Um, I've got medication that helps me sleep better, well, helps me sleep deeper. It makes it hard to get up for work. <laughs> That's really bad. But, um, Do you think the medication helps? I feel that it does help, yes. Yeah. Because I originally started on fluxetine, which is a... I, I don't really know how to describe it. I'm not going to start spewing out words that might not might not necessarily actually be attached to that but what fluxetine did for me because it's quite different for everyone else is that rather than it eliminating lows it basically just eliminates your lows eliminates your highs and yeah. you're basically just plateauing the whole time right. so i don't i wouldn't get to experience joy from anything that i liked but then i also wouldn't feel low yeah if something bad happens so right. i'm constantly feeling the same the whole time so there's no variability just sort of compresses those exactly so, so for some people that's good because that's kind of like a bubble of safety yeah but for me that sucks because i'm quite an emotional person and like i want to feel something right. and if i feel that a large part of me is being suppressed then i f like that's that just made me feel awful and i couldn't do it do you feel like you've been sort of like emotionally suppressed by it um, when I was on fluxetine, yes. Yeah. Following that, I went on to oh Christ, what's it called? Uh, venlafaxine, and that's <laughs> these yeah, names. crazy names. So I went on to venlafaxine, and I went on the smallest dosage of that, and it did wonders for me because I would take one a day, and it would basically eliminate my lows, but my highs would like still exist, but it made my mood like vary right. way more, and it made me a lot more sensitive, which was daft. Right. And then following that, how how sensitive? How sensitive? Um, this is where the whole uh, automatic negative thoughts and the invasive thoughts come in. Um, I'm quite an emotional person and I feel that's primarily due to my upbringing and not really having um, any like permanent male role models. This, right. is what, this is what I think, to be honest. Like uh, I barely saw my dad growing up right. and I saw my stepdad every two or three weeks because okay. he worked offshore in the rigs. Right. And whenever he was home, he was a bit of an arsehole. So right. he sang my praises in front of my mom and his pals and stuff like that but anything that was me and him mm -hmm. he was an arsehole so um i didn't really have any like proper good male role models and i think that's kind of made it quite difficult for me to be pals with like with men in general to be honest but um i think the my mood's gone oh what was the question again sorry i'm tangenting so hard right now um i'm, I'm enjoying the tangents to be right, honest okay, fine. i can keep going with that it's fine um I feel that my mood was fluctuating so much because I was so such an emotional person because that was what my upbringing was like. Um, and it, it would be things like um, at work, it would be like, um, it wouldn't be something like, uh, oh, what you're doing is rubbish or anything like that. You've done that wrong or anything like that because that's a means of 
educating and learning and that and that's the sort of stuff that i love it would just be like really stupid things where it would be like um i'd be talking to i'd be talking to somebody about veganism and every everybody i know in construction is not vegan yeah so i'm a proper proper minority in that but when i've spoken to someone about it i remember speaking to them about extinction rebellion and i spoke to them about animal rebellion Mm -hmm. and then i was basically like they are two different entities and they're both doing different things and i think that what animal rebellion is doing is fantastic Mm -hmm. but what extinction rebellion are doing is great but i think that the way that it is perceived is um that it's all fun and games and it's a party yeah and i tried to explain that to one of my pals and they were just like it's just the same thing isn't it it's just stupid isn't it it's absolutely ridiculous like they're just holding people up like i could be in the center of london i couldn't (laughs) get a taxi because somebody's dressed as a car in a cob and he's lying in the road (laughs) And then I'm just sat there just like, like, just yeah. like suddenly like a switch has been hit in my head and I'm just like, you know what? Why even waste my breath? Mm. <laughs> and then I just like start to feel low and then I, I recognize the low because I'm quite self-aware and it just goes lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. Yeah. And I eventually get to the point where I'm just like, why am I here? What is this all about? At what point did you decide to go and, and get checked out? Um, I decided to get help after, hmm, start of the year I think it was. I think it was start of the year that I probably did something about it. It was around about the same time that I started to feel healed. So yeah, actually no, anniversary to feel healed was last month actually. Yeah, so it would have been last October is when I decided to do something about it. Right. And then since then I've basically been. Um, I, I can't. It doesn't make sense to say that I was experimenting with medication because that makes it sound like I managed to get a hold of it like through Amazon yeah. and just no, decided to play about with it. You're, you're but, totally um, right by saying that, mm-hmm. yeah, because you really don't know how each I medication know reacts on individuals. And I feel like yeah. I'm still trying to do that because fluoxetine was awful for me. The lowest amount of venlafaxine didn't work for me. I'm now on three times the original dosage that I was on, which sounds ridiculous, but, but to be fair it's actually okay right and it's not that bad but then the new one that i have to take alongside venlafaxine is called quintiapine right which is um i, I hate i actually hate that what it actually is it's basically like anti-psychosis drugs so meaning what um psychosis is something that um that it's a uh, and it's uh, it's an extreme strain of mental illness where I'm trying to think of the example. Basically, when I did my NHS, like first aid, mental health first aid training, one of the last examples we got given was on psychosis. And what it was was that um, you're living in a flat block and you can hear from the floor above you that someone is slamming doors constantly and they are just like, you can hear them like speaking to themselves essentially. And it's some psychotic disorder. And you decide to leave your flat, you go upstairs, knock on the door, and you ask if this person is okay. They open the door a wee crack in that, and they're essentially having a conversation with themselves, and they are basically showing, like, psychotic tendencies, right. where there's, um, there's like, links of self-harm in there, and they're basically um, a danger to themselves, right. essentially. So people that suffer from psychosis are essentially, like, a danger to themselves, and that's usually one of, like, the, the last kind of resort things that people think that you kind of need to be sectioned or you need help for okay. like beyond your gp and stuff so i take antipsychosis drugs because not because i'm a danger to myself but because i'm using them as a form of anxiety suppression right okay because like all these drugs can do multiple different things yeah yeah it's not like it's just um oh yeah you take fluoxetine and that and that's going to help you with depression you get like a whole pamphlet yeah that has like a hundred different things on it and it tells you like one in 250 people experience this one in ten thousand people experience this and that and yeah. there's all different things that can happen in it but i use it as like an anxiety suppressant and so far it's been good yeah but i um, suppose when you think about like your brain has all these different levels of chemicals mm, totally all you're doing is sort of like influence those chemicals but you don't know how it might influence you or me or mm-hmm, exactly. anyone else and that's why so, i'm essentially um that's why I'm essentially experimenting. Yeah, so yeah. Like, I, like I'm currently looking into CBD oils, right, to see if there's something I can do with that. But I and what's up, your opinions on that kind of stuff? I think that I'm interested by it. Yeah. There's no involvement of THC whatsoever, so therefore I cannot break edge, and it's not like taking drugs or anything right. like that because there's no THC that's within it. But CBD can be taken in like a, an oil form, yeah. like orally, or it can be taken like as a tablet, or it can be absolutely anything. Isn't it? Yeah, it's... like there's so much you can do. Like I've got I've got friends that like um, 
that um, go out and buy like CBD joints and stuff and that sorts them out. There's yeah. no THC whatsoever like right. in the rolly, but like it works for them. But then there's other people that rub it on their skin and yeah, stuff I've like seen that, that as well. well. Yeah. But um, I'm, in- I'm intrigued in it because I'm, I kind of feel like I'm on a wee journey right now to just find out what works for me. And Have I'm you tried there. anything in that sort of realm yet now? CBD stuff? Nah, nah. Not, yet. not yet. I don't know. I was very, um, I was very anti-weed yeah. when like, I was in uni and stuff. But then when I read up on it and realized that it's not got THC in it, then yeah kind of opens it up for me yeah. which is cool it's kind of like mm. how you don't really understand like it's just like oh it's all the same thing and then when you realize there's a culture mm-hmm. underneath there's so many subcultures you actually do like a wee bit of digging like you can actually like yeah. learn things it's yeah. so amazing <laughs> learn imagine things. learning <laughs> yeah um so like how's your experience with like those medications now and have you ever like went on to like um sort of more organic versions of of uh, helping your mental health organic stuff um i have a friend who is a naturopath right which is super cool yeah. um, on the which one was it i think it's on the seventh or eighth video on like our video series it's with a uh, jess of the ba- the canadian bad mortality rate right and she suffers from mental health and like i speak to her all the time because she's one of the nicest people that i've ever met but she is a naturopath where she doesn't seek out um, doctor prescribed <clears throat> prescriptions, right? But she basically practices um, like herbal alternatives. Herbal stuff. I was gonna say like naturology. <laughs> I don't naturology. even know. The, <laughs> I don't even know what the word is, but like she does all that. Herbology. Super is that what it'd be stuff. called? Herbology. Like I was speaking to her last night because like I was I was still feeling quite anxious after like I did the whole anxiety poll thing mm. on like asking people for help and that, and she spoke to me and she was like do you want like a proper hippie remedy right now and i was like yeah i'll go for it <laughs> and she's like if you combine lavender peppermint and this particular oil and then stir it into like a cup of tea and that like you'll feel class and then i had somebody else that was messaging me telling me that there's a kratom tea which is like a a grounded a, a grounded up asian compound that is meant to be like an incredible anxiety suppressant but the right. issue with it is, is that it's illegal in the uk it's illegal in the it's UK. it's apparently illegal in the uk so i don't know what it is you can get that it. sounds even more exciting i know exactly it just makes it <laughs> sound way more fun but um yeah like i've i've been super tempted by it yeah. but there's just i don't know where to start yeah i don't know where the, the doorway is for me because yeah. the people that i've spoke to about it have all been from canada or australia and stuff like that. Where a lot of things are, are much more uh, accessible. Mm-hmm. For these particular things, yeah. yeah. But um, I'm, I'm honestly open to just trying and yeah. <laughs> anything. Anything yeah. that helps. Yeah, I just want to see what works because I feel like I'm quite a confident person and I feel that if I want to try something and it doesn't work, then I'll easy take the hit to learn that it doesn't work for me. Do you think you're on the mend? Uh, I don't think it's ever possible to be cured or anything mm-hmm. like that. I always think that... Um, you're going to be up and down your whole life yeah but um i think i'm definitely on the mend from like a couple of days ago right yeah but yeah um a question that uh, me and my friends have been kind of like talking about and we've we've never really come to like a solid conclusion is if it's uh bless you, bless you. <laughs> um if it is sort of like is it a good thing to know if you're uh if you have uh sort of something wrong or if you're um so like I, I, my uh comparison am i wording this right you know the question i'm asking so sort of like um is it better to know if you've got something wrong with your mental health or does that solidify that there's something wrong and that, that could be even more scary in a sense um so, oh actually no i totally know what you mean yeah. um is it better to know if you suffer from something or is it yeah. better to kind of be in the dark about it yeah uh, if you're like you see the diagnosis exactly work from that on or better to not know what it is and kind of stay naive to it yeah. yeah is it better to stay naive to it okay. if it if it's not severe it's kind of like uh, a broken thumb you can't really do anything about it anyway so is it better just to not know you had a broken thumb in the first place you just had a sore thumb for a bit and then you've just got this gammy thumb and yeah you've like, just got a gammy thumb for naive. like <laughs> um i think this one's like deeply personal i think that it's totally dependent on the person yeah but i feel that for me in particular i think it is way better to have a professional diagnosis right in comparison to um being naive because 
naivety doesn't necessarily mean that the information that you may or may not require is inaccessible because there's nothing stopping you from right like, yeah. there's nothing stopping you from being super naive about the fact that you suffer from mental illness and going online and realizing oh mm. somebody's just posted a tweet that sends off of, like something that i have yeah so i yeah. feel like there's still a chance of re- relatability to yeah. kind of hit you but I think that it's a lot safer to actually get some sort of professional diagnosis. But I understand that there's a lot of people that go to the doctors with the intention of being diagnosed and then they come away with paracetamol. <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah. that does happen. But I think that taking the chance is a lot better than staying naive because, again, there's still that chance that you're going to come across that information um, through the likes of Twitter and that because Twitter is infamous for that where like it'll be Mental Health Awareness Day and suddenly mm-hmm. feet 500 twitter <clears throat> is on the top of a mountain screaming uh, i feel depressed today because i they didn't have matcha lattes at starbucks <laughs> and then suddenly everyone's like oh my god i can't believe you would say that you're depressed over that and then suddenly everyone bandwagons and jumps on the top of that and everyone starts talking about what depression actually is yeah. and then you fall down the rabbit hole and you're all of a sudden thinking these things sound awfully similar to what i have it's the same sort of thing where like people that go out of their way to google the fact that they've had a cough for three days mm, and suddenly yeah. they believe that they've got like a tumor they've yeah. got a tumor in their ear like it's it can just become anything yeah. um so i think it's way better to actually have a professional diagnosis because that is essentially your question being answered yeah yeah definitely yeah i, I completely agree with that i suppose it's it's probably still better to know if you have a broken thumb oh totally <laughs> yeah um Jumping on that uh, social media idea, mm-hmm. what do you think on on and what are your impressions of this new like uh, Instagram movement where they're uh, removing how many likes you have from your posts? Mm-hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you also can't see who or you're following anymore or uh, other people who other people are following as well i've, I've um, seen stuff like that you can I, still see how many followers and how many people they follow but you just can't actually see specifically who it is ah i don't know but i don't know about the following thing whatsoever yeah. um i know about the like thing because i posted something about that today to ask yeah. people whether they think it's good or whether it's bad and a lot of people think it's kind of an overwhelming majority right now that it's a good thing so right. that's what the community that i am part of believes i personally believe that it is a good thing but I don't know. No, it is, right? To be totally honest, I don't want to be offensive or be stupid about it. I feel that it's it's incredibly double-edged on the sense that there's going to be people out there that are going to get... I've got a part... <laughs> this is annoying me. I'm trying to think of the best way to wear this. It's double-edged in the sense that if you can't see the amount of people that are liking posts, I think that brands that are seeking out people mm. that are actually wanting to become something are yeah. not going to be able to see their vanity metrics. Right. In a sense. They're not actually going to be able to see uh, how many likes is this person getting. Fair enough, they can still see the amount of comments that people are getting. Like Instagram's not got to the point where it's became like imgur or Flickr, yeah where like you see the post and you see how many people viewed it and that's it yeah like instagram still has that ability to socialize which i think is brilliant but removing the amount of likes is going to make it more difficult for people that want to essentially become something to be found and i think that if you remove one vital part of the vanity metrics it essentially means that brands are going to rely on people that have followers yeah and followers can still be bought and followers yeah. can still be faked yeah so um I think that there's a good mix up of the number of people that you are the number of people that are following you the amount of people that are commenting and engaging with yourself and the amount of people that are liking your things if you remove one of them then it kind of it it dilutes the whole thing mm-hmm. in a sense if it dilutes the whole process of it yeah definitely yeah. it makes it more difficult for um people to kind of put themselves out there because there's a lot of people on these social media apps that really do want to become something like yeah. that's what the thing is like i get messages daily being like hey subscribe to my channel and it's like <laughs> what do you do though and then they don't reply to you and then the ones that do reply to you just being like oh i'm um i i make music and i'm like cool i'll check it out i'll go and listen to the stuff and i'm just like you know what i'm not really into this yeah. but good luck in your venture and then they get proper aggy with you because they feel that if they like your stuff that they feel that something has to be done yeah in it has to be reciprocated yeah like i think that whole idea sucks ass yeah. because if that was the way then there would be accounts with a million followers that would also be following a million yeah and then and then, it, the then it becomes 
it, it, communism it, ex <laughs> exactly <laughs> everyone's it, equal exactly. everything's the same and it essentially means that if everything has to be done like that then it means that nobody's going to stand out yeah. nobody's really going to be able to, you're not going to understand like the content that is out there that is truly important yeah i think the way i've sort of been looking at it is like uh as someone that doesn't personally care about how many mm -hmm. likes or followers i have it never bothered me so it didn't seem mm -hmm. like something that needed to be done but knowing people that actually do care a lot about mm -hmm. followers and 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 likes and then taking that metric away they i think it probably will help them because mm -hmm. they can't compare themselves to other people when yep. they don't have that information to compare so it's it, i see how it can definitely be a good thing mm -hmm. but i also see how it's sort of like the downfall of what social media is in a sense yes. where it is supposed to be uh an algorithm that shows its metrics and yes. there is information to get off of uh, uh, content mm -hmm. uh so yeah I, I agree that it really is sort of as a a win-win lose-lose situation mm -hmm. really yeah i'll go with that definitely yeah yeah i think like another part of it as well that i think is quite bad is like you said about people making comparisons i think the in terms of comparison it's great that the like function has well the number of likes has been removed it's great that people can't compare themselves through that like people can't compare other people comparing themselves in a sense but yeah i think that there's a lot of people out there that have to do that in order to feel the validation because there's right yeah cause, like i can see that i can't see i can still see the number of likes that i'm getting on a post mm -hmm. but i can't see the number of likes other people are getting on posts so suddenly i don't have the ability to kind of gauge where i personally am sitting in comparison to like my peers right so yeah i think there's thought. i think there's a good few people out there like i've got a friend in particular who has put me like on our close friends and does I don't, like, do you not think that's quite odd like the whole close friends thing there's a lot of people that i barely know right and then they put me on the close friends thing and i'm just like thanks but yeah <laughs> well I, I have thought about it and i suppose it's sort of like uh like instagram's way of combating people having second accounts like they're Ooh, never you know that. yeah so that they like, can still like have finsters yeah. yeah um but i don't see what why they would lose out by people having second accounts mm -hmm. so i don't know why they would have to combat that mm -hmm. thing you know but um going back to what my pal is like and um, she put up on her close friends thing being like i got a reach of um five thousand on this account like on this particular post of like like oat bread or something like that like um like my my, yeah. my enthusiasm for food accounts is incredibly limited <laughs> but um she put up a thing saying um i this post in particular managed to reach about five thousand people but i only got 120 likes on it and she was very stressed about that because she couldn't understand why f out of five thousand people only 120 people decided to click the little love heart button she couldn't understand that whatsoever so like i went back to her and i was like i had a post that got eight thousand views and i only got 120 likes mm. it doesn't like yeah. there, there can be people that are viewing things but then you've got to take into consideration that everyone is still living their life outside of their phone yeah just because you're posting something doesn't mean that you are due likes or due validation or anything like that you are posting because you are wanting to and you're putting yourself there and i think you need to actually understand that maybe not everyone's going to like your stuff maybe not everyone has the time to sit and like your stuff maybe not everyone's got the time to sit and like your captions i write out massive captions and i know for a fact there are people that like things and do not read a thing mm. i remember i wrote a post about um suicide ideation and how i was feeling particularly suicidal before i realized that um i needed more help hence why i'm on second medication and I remember posting about suicide ideation and how that I was grateful that people had reached out to me and spoke to me about how everything's sound, don't do anything stupid, the standard sort of stuff. Yeah. Even though being told don't do anything stupid is patronizing as fuck. Yeah, yeah. But I remember two vegan account two vegan accounts replied being like, Hey, this looks delicious. And like it's a photo of me and i'm just like sick thanks cool. thank do you, you. Want, do, you want, do you want my number and then i had another one that was just like wow this looks great and i was like oh, mate God. i'm literally talking yeah. about suicide yeah do you not read things and then they deleted their comments but i screen capped it before i could and i popped it up on my story and i messaged them and i was like do not read stuff do not understand that there are more functions in instagram than getting your little follower number up like yeah 
I just thought it was absolutely mental. It's that. clear that social media has become very integral to uh, the way the world works currently. Uh, did we have a question from our live studio audience? Not a question, more just an input, but like, I was thinking about why I like photos and when I like photos. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the time we don't like a photo because we like it and we like the content. It's almost that need for reciprocation. Like if mm-hmm. I comment on this mm-hmm. photo and I like this photo, that person's going to give me that back. And it's a totally selfish thing. So the fact that like so many people are seeing your photo and only this many people are liking it. Mm-hmm. People like photos for a different reason. Some people go on Instagram and just look. They don't like. 100%. The like yeah. And actually doesn't mean anything. Yeah, totally. We're completely doing that for reciprocation. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting anyway. part, yeah. Like the means of consumerism have changed a fair bit thank you for that that's actually a really good point yeah i feel like the means of consumerism has been diluted very much so because i feel like before uh forums and message boards Mm, like they're all they're all text-based and i feel that in order to actually understand what's going on you need to spend time and read it it's like um yeah in order to um watch like shows on netflix or streaming things that are from other cultures and that like there's a thing that um Ina and I were going to watch the other night that Tokyo Stories Midnight Diner or something and I was like let's watch this because I love Asian culture and Mm -hmm. this has got stuff to do with food and I'm all for that and then we put it on and then subtitles popped up and Ina straight away was just like nah Uh, I just don't (laughs) want to watch it because like (laughs) yeah yeah because the means of consuming nowadays I think are very very different from what they were unless you have a significant interest in it yeah it's like people that watch um people that watch anime yeah like you get a lot of people that like to watch it in English, yeah. But then you've got like the true weebs and the true gamers <laughs> out there that need to watch it in Japanese with yeah. the subtitles and that. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm definitely in the party of like it's it is better with subtitles because mm-hmm. I, I feel like it just sort of ruins the art. Like it's me and so Lucy watch a lot immersive. of like foreign uh, like movies and stuff mm-hmm. like that, especially Spanish ones, and like you you don't ironically when they speak english you don't feel connected to it anymore mm-hmm. it feels uh you feel alienated if you want a really really good show that's in spanish it's on netflix and it's called paper house i think cool yeah it's what the, have you watched it's, it's the heist one yeah that's the one we're so sick oh is that the one we're watching yeah the um oh, I, I, Oh, money, money heist, yeah. right? Because there's two different names. Yeah, the Spanish, the Spanish one, one is right? Paper okay. House, and then there's money yeah. heist. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. So, so sorry. sorry. And he doesn't think he'd like it, and he's loving it. And yeah, he wants to get back to it. it's just so hard. And yeah. like Spanish is such a beautiful language that like you're just like whipped from the beginning to be like, I love this. It's so <laughs> yeah. so good. But right, um, going on tangents now. Yeah, tangents. I love tangents. Um, Netflix tangents. Right, where where are we going? Uh, where are, where we? are we going? I mean, where do you want to go? Um, is there anything you'd like to talk about well we're talking about the good things and the bad things about the like system and social media and consumerism and just talk about your poll that you missed my poll yeah ah. that's definitely a good thing to bring up okay so you I need to give a lot of context for this before okay. you jump in so mental health is something that is super super important to me I've I've been wanting to kind of like word this sort of thing for like but a good six months or something like that. I think it was like after, actually, no, probably longer than that. It was after we had done the podcast. Mm-hmm. I remember just being sat in my car and I'd be like, how do I introduce how, what my understanding of what mental health was and that? And I sat and I've, I've basically like spoke it through so many times in my head. But what my understanding of what mental health is, is that it's something that I discovered when I was about 16 and I was incredibly naive to it and i remember later in life i was exposed to it yet again when i was 21 and again i was incredibly naive to it and then when i got to about 26 that's when mental health hit me personally and it became right. a big deal to me so it was almost like um at what age sorry 26 right i'm old <laughs> um so the way that i kind of viewed that whole cycle was that i remember i'm gonna talk about like a, an actual police thing police case that happened ages ago there was essentially a case study from multiple years ago and i can't remember what country it is in but it's essentially that a woman is walking home from a night out and it's maybe about maybe about midnight or something like that and she's in front of a flat block all the lights are on and stuff like that but the woman is attacked while she is there right but out of all these lights that are on the woman is screaming and she's trying to trying to hardest to get away from this man that's attacking her and all these lights are on but no one no one does anything. Yeah. Everyone can hear it. Windows are open. Lights are on. There is clearly people that are there, 
but they are choosing to remain naive to it yeah. despite what is in front of them and that's when like mental health kind of like really triggered in my head because i felt that i was naive i continued to be naive and then it suddenly became personal and yeah. then that's when i had to pay attention so i decided to do a poll that i've wanted to do for ages where i put up a story that was 60 seconds long and within that I put captions in the first 15 seconds, but I said, this is super important. Like you have to watch this. If you don't get to watch this, I'll highlight it and you can watch it later. Um, I basically like stressed how important it was. Yeah, like yeah. in the first 15 seconds, I myself sound super desperate and I'm like, please sit and watch this. I need you to sit and watch this. So throughout those 60 seconds, about 20 seconds of that is basically me saying, I'm feeling incredibly anxious right now. Like I'm in work by myself. I don't really have anyone to kind of turn to. And I feel like I'm in a really bad place mentally right now. If you have any particular advice that you could give me for feeling like this, if you've ever been in this situation or you've gave advice to someone um, that has been in this situation, then please give me that advice. But if you personally feel that you suck at advice, just <laughs> message me back saying everything will be okay. Yeah, I gave people two outlets yeah i gave them one that was basically predetermined and created for them yep. and i gave them complete and utter creative freedom mm -hmm. to do something with that when i say it like this it sounds super interesting because it now sounds like i did a good thing and i, I mean i think you did do a good thing i basically it's put a very eye-opening thing i put that poll up and i specifically said in it this is not a witch hunt and this is not a means mm -hmm. of me trying to catch people out this is not a means where I'm going to put this poll up and then I'm going to go noise my mates up and be like, why did you not say anything? Do you not care about me? It was never that intention, but I feel that when it comes to mental health, everyone is so, so keen to voice that they're supportive, but it's one of those things that you love to see. Like you want to see it. Yeah. So like people actually speaking up and doing something about it, I feel is a lot rarer than we would like it to be there's a lot of mental health accounts out there there's so many of them um like in particular on instagram there is megan's mind who is fantastic she suffers from like emetophobia depression and anxiety and ocd and basically she can't leave the house and it's incredibly sad but megan's mind is a right. fantastic person and there is also laura's mental health who suffers from the same things and she's great she's got a fantastic community that she's created in a very very short amount of time but there are two accounts that are brilliant right. that you should definitely link because they're yep, fantastic absolutely people. um so i feel that mental health is <clears throat> something that is fantastic that is it's something that is easy to convey but in order to get some sort of response back it's incredibly fleeting and considering instagram is very aesthetics based it's incredibly fleeting i feel that if you sit something so obvious in front of someone on instagram I feel that people are more likely to consume it visually than they are to audio visually. Yeah, yeah. So um, I put that I put that poll up and I was like, basically, just if there's any advice you can give me, do so. And if not, just tell me everything will be okay. And I tried to not look at my phone for like a whole day. Got two hours in, realized that twenty people hadn't. Uh, twenty people um, didn't watch it the whole way through, and then I got really upset about that again because I'm yeah. a super emotional person. But I generally just thought like. I've gave you 15 seconds of my time yeah. to tell you how I am. That is a minuscule amount of time. Like, you can't even make a coffee in that time. You can't even make instant coffee in that time. <laughs> but, like, I gave such a small amount of time to express a very large part of myself. Yeah. And there was people that just skipped past it yeah. because Instagram is fleeting. And I feel that that's where that example that I gave about the police case study earlier comes in. That yeah. Everyone can see what's going on. But it's whether you choose to physically partake in it yeah. is what makes the difference. It's almost like people are, are just waiting on someone else st standing yes. in first it's instead exactly of being that. the one to do it. They're just conforming to the norm of just mind your own business exactly. kind of thing. There was like um there was a training course that I did at my work one time and I can remember that there they showed us like a part of a TED talk where it was about how uh, participation is overrated because they think that rather than participating in someone else's thing you should kind of create your own roadshow. You should create right. your own space to kind of do your own thing. Because if you do that and you show the confidence and the ability, then other people will participate in what you are doing. Right, okay. Because normally how it works is that you do, you're doing your own thing. You're dancing at a festival by yourself. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the first person comes in and joins in with you and it's usually like a piss take and someone's just dancing mm. away and doing this and that and then more people join in because they realize that someone has taken the first step for yeah. them and once that first step has been that first step has been taken and someone has essentially endured the ridicule that they did not want to everyone else can pile in yeah and it's they're free of judgment yeah it's very interesting psychology that can really apply to effectively anything in human nature it's wild like yeah. pe- people are weird that people are people super are weird. interested in yeah. yeah but um yeah back to the poll i put that up because i generally just wanted to see who cares <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, who has 15 seconds spare to listen to someone that is essentially crying for help yeah and it wasn't fake it wasn't manufactured or anything like that yeah i was generally thinking i have an opportunity right here to highlight something that is a genuine issue to me and And it's coming from a real place exactly i wanted it to come from a real place because like i can i've watched it back so many times and i can hear like a a shake in my voice and everything like i don't think it's anything that you could manufacture because some people got back to me and they're like i don't know if this is fake and it's like it's not i am in an yeah. awful place right now. i don't even think i questioned it when i saw it. I, I thought mm. instantly when i saw it like oh like it, it caught me mm. off guard it felt like almost like uh in a, a very odd way it was almost nice to see because it seemed so very genuine i from, wanted it to be as raw as possible yeah, from yeah. A, from like social media which is so ungenuine most of the time mm-hmm. so when you see stuff like that you you feel it, like a sense of human connection and you can't not enjoy it even though it obviously wasn't coming mm-hmm. from a great place or do you know what i mean i it, feel that like it's a far cry from people popping bottles of champagne like off yeah. their balconies and like yeah. the saturation's been slammed yep. up and yeah i feel like it's a it's an incredibly far cry a far cry from that and i feel that i really kind of put myself on the line with it because yeah. it might just seem like it was kind of like a harmless wee thing in that but to me that was something that was like that felt make or break to me because I felt that it was either going to get taken terribly and people were going to be like why are you trying to call us out and people would make it personal but thankfully it didn't get taken like that yeah and um Instagram's got this weird algorithm thing right now where like you don't really get to see many people's posts and you currently don't get to see many people's stories either so I think the amount of people that watched it is not an actual fair reflection yeah. of the amount of people that could have could possibly, have possibly yeah. seen it so the way that it worked out is that from the time that i posted it i posted it maybe about two o'clock or something like that right. that's when like the majority of my followers are like waking up right essentially because i've yeah. got quite a lot of overseas folk and my like peak time on instagram is 8 p.m right which is quite odd um so I it's interesting it. that you know that and you're aware of it i'm aware of it yeah because yeah, you've got the it shows you the bars and stuff yeah so um I try my best to kind of abide by that to make yeah. sure it works. But I thought this time, let's make it as difficult as possible because I wanted to see who generally cared. And out of the 403 people that watched it, 378 people watched it the whole way through. Right. And 143 people got back to me on by whilst the story still existed. Right. And then an additional 30 got in touch with me personally after right. it. Because I highlighted it, so it meant yeah. that people could watch it whenever they wanted yeah. and that. So I was generally just really surprised that yeah. that many people got back to me. Only one person questioned whether it was fake, and everyone else was just like, like, hold on, like you've got this, and yeah. um, have you considered looking into grounding? Have you ever thought about um, smoking weed? What's and, grounding? Uh, grounding is something that I've not actually looked into, but what it is is um, a lot of people with mental health health issues um suffer from a thing called it disassociation it's it's like an underlying thing that basically everyone kind of gets through mental illness and what disassociation is is that um it's a great album by the dillinger escape plan but it is also a means of you know how you play games and you can see yourself in third person Mm, yeah yeah it's like that right essentially disassociate yourself from who you are right. and what you are so the like way, a lack of self-awareness in a sense it's a, or... it's a major lack of self-awareness and you suddenly to care you suddenly care less about how you're feeling what things can um what things can occur as a consequence of your actions there's multiple things that kind of link into disassociation but it's essentially like it's like taking yourself and you're like extracting a vital part of yourself right. out so it's kind of like that and a lot of people really suffer from it when it comes to mental illness and 
I think grounding is a means of kind of like tethering that part of yourself right. to yourself and kind of reeling it back in. Okay. That's kind of what it is. Like people mentioned, like, oh, you need to find your tether. Right. And then I was like, I don't, it's a, what's the tether? <laughs> <laughs> but I think the tether is different from everyone. But then yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a whole nother story that yeah. I'm really not equipped to answer because I don't know <laughs> anything about it. So yeah, back onto the uh, poll though. So Back onto the poll. Um, most people had a, a very good positive response. And you got a quite an amazing turnout as I well. I got an amazing turnout, yeah. yeah. I'm really, really surprised about that because I feel that I have quite a small following to be honest like i have what 2500 people to me that's quite small because it's not my target as i want to get to 10k i don't know when i'm going to get there but i want to get to 10k and then i'll what did you say you're at right now uh two and a half that's not bad mm-hmm. i've I mean, got like mine's quite like a slow organic process building yeah. it up which i think is quite good because it means i actually get to know the people that yeah are that, that's quite a, a good number of people that are uh, also very like uh engaging because mm-hmm. uh, as far as i know people do take part in your polls like you're always posting uh I people's replies responses. and stuff yeah. like that yeah so I love that that's stuff. a that's a good amount of people mm-hmm. who are also very uh interested in mm-hmm. the content you're totally. creating. so um 143 responses whilst the story was up and then an additional 30 after that after yeah. the poll went down and yeah i got some great ones talking about um disassociation grounding um uh, talk to your GP, um, have you spoke to your family, uh, you should talk to your friends about this, um, don't drink caffeine, like, hundreds of things. It was a nightmare being told not to drink caffeine, because I'm, when I'm at work, I'm already wired to the moon. Yeah. Like, what, sure why uh, not drink caffeine? Uh, because caffeine is a stimulant of anxiety. Right, okay, okay, that makes sense. Which essentially makes it seem like part of my anxiety is self-inflicted. But I do like terrible coffee. That, so I yep. can't really ignore that fact. <laughs> um, that's an interesting thing that you've just said, though, and I've, I'd like to explore that a bit cool. if you'd be up for it. As long as you don't make me look silly, then I'm okay. No, no. <laughs> um, do you think that mental health can be uh, not self-inflicted? I doubt that you could ever sort of self-inflict uh, any sort of mental health mm-hmm. issues, but do you think they could be heightened uh, heightens the right word yeah, yeah totally using 100%. using uh, be, mm-hmm. through your own means i think through the means of recovery you can definitely heighten like the the chance that you could suffer further right because there's means that like with me experimenting with different medications yeah exactly like, yeah. exactly like um i was having incredible lows and occasional highs and then i took fluoxetine and then i was plateaued the entire time that to me might be fantastic for other people but to me personally, it sucked because I didn't get to feel anything, and that kind of heightened my. It kind of heightened my depression more than anything else because I never got to actually experience joy again. Right. So like it, it kind of made me more susceptible to feeling worse. In right. a sense. But then I also think as well that people that suffer from like social anxiety disorders, I think that if you put them in a social situation where it's an incredibly crowded room where they don't know anyone and that's that'll make things worse i generally think that there are means that through recovery you can definitely self-inflict things that can make things worse before they get better but there are definitely things that can outright make things worse in the get-go yeah like um i'm trying to like think of like a physical analogy um We'll be like, I know, I can't think of a physical analogy without thinking of something stupid. Like, I suppose, oh, I suppose the coffee yeah. one is like mm-hmm. as close to an analogy as we can get right now. Like, if um, no, can't think of one. I'm not, I'm not even going <laughs> to force not, not one because it's sense. not going to make sense. It's like the time that I was in college and I didn't understand what irony was, and one of my mates was just like, try explain it to me, and I was literally trying to force something. I was like, uh, uh, would it be like if uh, if uh, we were we were studying architecture and somebody just came in with a sword? I was like, no, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Stupid, isn't it? I tried to force it and it just didn't make sense. So, yeah. I'm sure it made perfect sense in your head. In my head, I was like, oh, that's ironic, isn't it? An ambulance hitting someone with their car? Like, I don't know, just stupid things. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Dumb tangents. Um, so we're coming to the one hour mark. No. And I mean, that's a pretty amazing piece of content we've just created, cool. I think. Uh, but is there anything you'd like to talk about or explore? Not, anything not, you... not farts, anyway. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm up for it if you're up for it. <laughs> is there anything you'd like to plug or anything like that? Uh, ooh, I want to plug me. Absolutely. 
Um, I want to plug my page on Instagram. It is at to feel healed. On YouTube, it is also to feel healed. I've started doing videos by myself where I essentially have been talking. About, I've been talking about veganism more than anything else right now at the moment because I feel that veganism is a very hot topic in the news right now. Like yeah, how um, there was. Um, I like. I don't. I don't have a TV license because I generally just I hate British TV so much. I can't stand it. It really bothers me. Like morning shows and loose women and all the all that stuff. Just it melts my head. I hate it. <laughs> so there was one particular uh, thing where, where um, it was like, oh, what's the one with like Holly and Phil and oh, this morning. I, this morning. I hate that okay. show. It sucks. I hate it. And the reason I hate it is because they came back from a break and then they were sat at a table with a bunch of bacon rolls and they're like, hey, bacon's back on the menu. We don't have to worry about the health risks anymore because they don't exist. And I was like, what? (laughs) Processed meat is in group one of the carcinogenics, which are highly linked to causing cancer. But two people on a couch have just told me that they don't exist anymore despite the fact that the World Health Organization has actually listed that on their site and has not taken it down. Because the reason that they said that this had happened, right, that just bothers me so much because there's actually going to be impressionable people out there that will hear this and go, "Yeah, I love Phil and Holly so much. Like, yeah. like there's people that will hear that and that will be gospel to them. But what it is is that they said the original study that was done that said that processed meats are bad, they read the study wrong. And I was like... How can, how can you read a study wrong? Like, you've carried out tests that are scientific to prove something. Yeah. But you read yes as no. Like, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't get how they can plug that. But I think that part of the reason that they were plugging that is because Extinction Rebellion was going on at the exact same time. Mm. And I think that if you've got people talking about how much the planet is having a bad time right now, you're going to have uh, the meat industry and the dairy industry essentially plugging things to benefit them yeah like um the the largest dairy company in the u.s has filed for bankruptcy uh, yes, but that, you yeah. don't hear much about that do you no because the mainstream media is not plugging that because that's something that does not shoot their agenda yeah and we're the ones that are accused of having an agenda like vegans but, yeah. just want to stop people eating animals and that you know yeah and stop watching what's that tv show called again the Love morning. Love Island. No, no, the 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 one with the fell in. Uh, oh, this morning. Yeah, we need we need people to stop watching that as well. We're not going to go into Good Morning Britain because that stuff really bothers me. Um, yeah, I think we've come to the conclusion over okay. this hour that uh, British TV sucks. British TV sucks. That <laughs> that's is the main point. The only other thing that I would like to plug is that I remember last time I was here, you asked me about particular accounts that I really really mm-hmm. liked. Yeah. Uh, one of them doesn't exist anymore. Oh, so um, that sucks. Through uh, which means. Um, I don't know, they just stopped posting. Retired. They just stopped posting in March, and that was it. Which is really weird. But I would like to plug some other really cool people that I really like. Um, there is a girl from Edinburgh called Venus and Fofar. Um, she talks about... Um, she's like a social media manager, and she's also vegan, and she talks about how she has experienced... Um, she's got like a... She's got like a condition. Like, you know, she gets hives all over her body right but she got she has like an aggravated version of that where right. like she can't essentially control them and there is no cure for that and then she talks about how there are mental health issues that come with that as well and then it's just super interesting to hear someone actually talk about something that is a physical issue yeah it's also talking about the emotional and mental yeah. effect that that has um other people that i would like to talk about would be um who we got that's actually really really nice there is a woman from canada called fresh no death who is a woman who actually works in the animal agriculture sector but she is a vegan so Whoa. it's super interesting Very to hear someone that is in such a conflicting environment kind of talk about being physically within the animal agriculture um community yeah but essentially opposing it so yeah. it's, it's really interesting to hear about her uh, who else have you got that's really cool? Um, uh, the girl that I spoke about earlier, Jess, that plays Immortality, yep. right, that we did the video with. Um, sh- her account, NyxXVX, she has a little company called Nyxcraft, where she makes like, tattoo pillows and oh. stuff like that. And like it's all all vegan, all homemade. That's she does awesome. the whole thing herself. And she's, she's so sound. Lovely, lovely woman. And she deserves the world. 
and uh, there, there's so many people that I could honestly say this is one of the things that I've enjoyed about Instagram the most is that I have met a lot of lovely yeah. people a lot of really cool people yeah. I've had people tell me that they can cure my mental health by eating particular minerals and metals um, I have met people that do yoga that basically tell me if I bounce on my head for 10 minutes then the blood rushing to my head will take my head away from my anxiety if you do <laughs> attempt any of these things and they want Please get in contact yeah, because totally that is very fascinating. Uh, then I've met people that are also, um, uh, there's a company called Satan's Grill right. and they are incredibly lovely people. They cater at vegan festivals right. and like screamy hardcore festivals <laughs> and stuff. And they've also just set up shop with one of their friends and the Instagram page is called Lilith Cometh. And basically what it is is that they have now opened their own store down in Cheltenham, which is half tattoo shop half restaurant that must be the first of its type Why that's the right? first hybrid so hybrid shop sick. ever so um, i'm planning on going down to see them and yeah. i think that would be really really cool yeah but um shout out to all those cool places and also edinburgh um considerate chocolate paradise palms that do the drag shows and serve up really really cool food and um yeah those places roll and that's basically all the things that i want to talk about awesome uh before we close up <coughs> i have a question for you cool and it's do you think you are making a positive impact throughout social media i don't even know why i'm hesitating yeah i think i'm yeah. making a hell of an impact well i, I knew my, my answer yeah, yeah. I, I think you are i think, I think i'm doing are. i personally think i'm doing well and i'm not going to try to be humble about it and just be like, yeah, yeah i think i'm doing all right yeah, i could be doing better than that obviously i could be doing better but like I yeah. think I'm doing a good thing because I'm encouraging people to speak. Yeah. The amount of people that are viewing my stories are going up. The amount of people that actually speak to me goes up constantly. Folk ask me things before if I don't even ask a question. People approach me about mental health issues that they're having. I've had people come to me with relationship problems and that right. as well because it's something that they think is deeply rooted in their heads and stuff and they just want to talk things through with me. I get asked all the time, regardless of where people are in the UK, they're big, oh, hey, I'm in Sheffield. Where can I go for food? And I'm like, you could Google this, but you've chose to ask me, <laughs> which is sick. And then in terms of um, straight edge culture as well, I've actually helped turn a couple of my friends uh, basically go straight edge. They've cut out drugs, stopped yeah. smoking and stopped drinking. And it's not been because I pressured them or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. I've essentially just highlighted that it rules. Yeah. And helped and guided them and helped them. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I've I've got pals that get in touch with me all the time. They'd be like, "Oh, I'm really craving like a drink or like a cigarette right now, and I feel like I'm in a bad place. Like, what do I do?" And I was like, "Go to the cinema, and go get a Tango Ice Blast because that's what I do." <laughs> if I ever get like, and then he goes and posts like an actual story yeah. of it, and I was like, "Yes, that's so sick." But um, now like there's there's loads of different ways of doing different things. Like, don't hold me on the Ice Blast thing because I don't know if it would work for everyone, but. It definitely worked for me. I, well, I the, NHS because I was going to try it here. Uh, <laughs> feeling depressed? Ice blast. Anxiety? Ice blast. Um, but no, I remember we discovered you've been sponsored by uh, Tango Ice, ice Blast. <laughs> but personally, yeah, I think I'm doing a good thing. Yeah. And I can say that confidently. Yeah. I might not get sent brand stuff all the time, like all these people that are getting organic basics. And they're just mm. like, oh, look, my, my bra is made from hemp. <laughs> like I might not be getting sent all that sort of stuff but like I still think that um, verbally and visually I'm providing something that matters yeah I, I definitely agree. I don't even feel big headed about that no I, I'm you sure. shouldn't because you are you are actually doing something good you're using a platform and you're you're projecting positive mm -hmm. uh, vibes from it I just feel that in <sighs> we're always made to believe that like technology bad like mm, fortnite yeah. bad social media bad like don't go on instagram you'll see somebody with abs and then you'll suddenly starve yourself and go to yeah. the gym and that which does happen which sucks and i've witnessed that firsthand which is awful but i feel that there are all these things that folk think are bad like yeah. uh, oh there's been there's been violence in puerto rico so let's blame video games mm. like there's always going to be something that folk are going to try and blame, but people need to understand that the things that are currently being blamed, like video games and social media and that, yeah. fair enough, they can have like detrimental yeah. negative effects, but we have to understand that there are also positives yeah, yeah. within those things. And they're like, so diverse. Oh, totally. Like, they're massively different things. Just because like there is 
trouble in America right now doesn't mean that we need to chastise the video game industry and that it's like oh yeah. am I am I really getting held accountable for what's going on in America because I've just sat and played Sonic and Knuckles for like three hours <laughs> like yeah exactly. so dumb right and or <laughs> or it could be like oh so get off your phone social media is ruining you and that and it's like you're there could be someone that is generally suffering from like an actual health condition and that and they'll be like it's Instagram that's making you feel that way but that person might not be following particular accounts that actually affect that like there are so many variables in there that i think people are very quick to completely and utterly ignore in order to just kind of point the finger and say this is the problem like you would say yeah. back you would, like i can mind when i was growing up it would be like oh get off your phone get off the xbox and that but i can imagine when like my mom was like younger and that my granny would be like why are you still reading that book like, yeah go inside yeah why are you reading that newspaper and then yeah. my granny's granny would be like oh do you want to get off the vinyl record player that <laughs> stops sending telegrams yeah right. <laughs> it never ends yeah exactly. I, I i totally agree with that ideology it's like we're we're not experiencing anything that different and it's mm. uh, fundamental meanings it's like yep. we're just in a cycle Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like how they always say like oh this generation they wear such outrageous provocative stuff but then mm-hmm. if you went back there's always they're going to be that equivalent and then you go back exactly. and there's always going to be that equivalent just yeah. because of what exists now yeah like apparently that's worthy of being chastised yeah. there was definitely things back in the day that were being chastised for the exact same reasons yeah I suppose the internet does add that, that extra strange shift it's it's so unexpected and we don't really know where it's going and and what Mm. effects it will have the internet generation but the internet also sucks yeah i'm i mean i'm in the i'm in the camp of i love the internet i think it's amazing i think it's fantastic yeah i think it does have a it's bad effects Mm -hmm. but again you could use anything to be bad we could talk about anything right now and i bet you would find out that there'd be bad things exactly like um what's your thoughts on oranges on oranges, I'm sure somebody's probably killed someone with an orange, so mm. oof, we should ban all oranges. Well, see, no. like, I think oranges taste great, right? But see, Same. if you brush your teeth and then you drink orange juice, it sucks. I disagree. I like that feeling. <laughs> I love that Why feeling. Why are you dating this man? <laughs> <laughs> I am a, a huge, uh, I'm a huge advocate of the See, the, the and now we've already oranges. found a variable that makes yeah, us different. exactly. Exactly. But yeah, you could literally make anything out yeah. to be that sort of thing. But, um... I'm not ready to bring this to an end. I've got too many questions now. I'm keep my brain. If keeps you want to keep up. going, yeah. I'll easily keep speaking. Um, I have another question to do with that, sort of like uh-huh. your perspective on mental health and how cool. you've coped with it. Okay. Do you think things like uh, you having a job helps you because it keeps you sort of distracted, or do you think it's also <laughs> a, a burden and makes it even worse? Uh, it's one of those things that I believe is incredibly double edged. Yeah. Because I feel that it is double edged in the sense that. I need my job in mm-hmm. order to continue living the way that I do. It provides for me. It provides a roof over my head. Um, I am able to buy things for my cats that they do not appreciate. <laughs> and I am also able to um, look after my partner as best as I possibly can. And it's an incredible amount of stress because the job that I work in is like construction accountancy. Yeah. So I'm pricing mm-hmm. hospitals. And if you, forgot to, if you forget to price up like an x-ray for the x-ray room you've kind of chucked it and then that's Mm. a mad amount of stress and you've got leading times and all that rubbish but i feel that having a job is good because it helps keep me distracted but it also completely and utterly puts me on edge that if i miss something then i spiral into a wee bit of anxiety and i feel awful but it's it's a bit of risk versus reward right i would rather be working than not have a job because if i was to sit on my arse and not do anything and I know there's a lot of people that are in that situation not through choice that I think that mental illness can definitely develop or it can be heightened or worsened because if you just sat your arse doing nothing it might yeah. be fantastic when like you're a teenager and you can just lie in your bed to like three <laughs> like I used to do on weekends and that. <laughs> but yeah I, I think that there's positives and negatives yeah. I don't want to be a fence sitter on it because I hate being a fence sitter I'd rather be this or that but, yeah but um, sometimes it's just on the way be i'm gonna think about this in the car the whole time <laughs> um it's good and bad yeah what about things like uh exercise and working out is that a help or um, you ever experience exercise is f- a fantastic release for a lot of people me personally um i could only ever exercise at home because the gym is a an echo chamber of complete and utter sadness for me because i see what i would like to be 
right and it does not work for me it basically like i'll see people like doing weights and that and then i'll just jump on the treadmill even though i don't need to be on the treadmill because i want to do the weights but then i don't do the weights because i see that someone is lifting bigger weights than me and making it look really easy and right. i'm sat there just like wow my arms are literally noodles and you guys are making this look so easy and i know that i could work to do that because i have the drive and the ambition to do it but the gym personally for me freaks me out and spirals me a wee bit but if i exercise at home then it's great but yeah i know that exercise works a lot for many many people like this folk i follow on Instagram, like i very seldomly follow food accounts and i very seldomly follow fitness accounts but the fitness accounts i do follow are people that i can genuinely appreciate their appreciation for exercise mm. because they don't make it look super easy they show that there's a graft in it and i yeah. can appreciate it for that and i can appreciate that it helps them yeah, it's I very, could, very I could talk subject. <laughs> perfect. That's the perfect yeah. person you want on a podcast. Um, huh? Yeah. See, what, see what we need to just do. I'll just not leave. Yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> That's cool. What's your thoughts on exercise then? Uh, I think exercise is amazing. Yeah, it's I, cool. I get what you're saying about uh, the gym. Personally, I'm not a fan of the gym, mm. but I don't really know why. I don't know if it's. Uh, is it the know. thumping nightclub music and? The, I, yeah, the yoga may, I think it's just the overall environment and that you need to pay to go to it and I, I think it's maybe that Being I need sucks, to pay right? to pay yeah. to go to it and I'm a bit funny with things like yeah that's it that's probably it I have legs I can run why Why would I pay for it yeah why, why, <laughs> do, why should I pay why should I pay to run on the spot when I don't get to see anything or I could just not pay that money run about and see things it's a mean of validation and acceptance for a lot of people though because if they see themselves at the gym or they see that other people see them at the gym yeah. then that to them is them being validated in the fact that they're right, exercising because yeah. there'll be folk that'll run, and run around the park and just be like you know what it's pesh can't be yeah. asked to be this yeah well, well yeah that's totally fine yeah I totally agree with that actually I like the gym because you don't have to go outside <laughs> that, yeah. also, yeah, I hate that is the bonus outside, I can think of yeah but I like the gym because it's almost like I'm driven by the competition of the people around me. Mm, I feel right. like if I go on the treadmill and I stop after two minutes, it kind of keeps me going. So that's mm-hmm. the only reason that I think I like being in that environment. It's kind of like an all-consuming, mm-hmm. everyone is working out here, I need to work out and try my best here. Yeah. Because I'm not own, I have a total lack of willpower running. Yeah. I just stop. You know, just get dead bored on a treadmill. I don't really go on the treadmill. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the trick. Mm. One one thing that always comes up whenever I talk about it is that people like the gym because it's a personality trait. It's not even well, it definitely is. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Mm. But not even that. It's that they pay monthly, so they know that uh, they need to go this amount of times for it to be worthwhile mm. financially. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it kind of forces them to go. It's like yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's like if you only had Netflix for a month, you're obviously going to go like absolute at it for oh, that month. It, yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't just go, oh, it's fine. I'll, I'll worry about it later. Do you know what I mean? You would, you mm-hmm. want to invest a lot of time into it because you've only got it for that. Month. I like that the gym doesn't really appear as much of a toxic environment as it used to. Mm, yeah. I remember when like Snapchat, and do you remember Yik Yak? Uh, Please tell me you Yik uh, Yak? Yeah, I did Yik, actually. Yik that. Yak was this anonymous app where like, people could basically talk shit about yeah. other people and they, could, they couldn't be found out whatsoever. I think we may have spoke about Yik Yak last time. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Well, basically... It's, it's kind of similar. It's similar it's to more like, thing, um, What was that other one called? Uh, it's like an anonymous message board. Yeah. It's kind of like Curious Cat. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking. It's like Curious Cat, but instead you're not asking someone that you know the question. It's people just posting random stuff. Right. And like you're literally like replying to like a pineapple or a tree or a cup. Yeah. It's stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's basically what like it is. But when that was kind of in its prime before it got shut down the gym was an incredibly toxic environment because people would be posting things being like oh stood on the stood on the treadmill and there's like an absolute chubber sweating on mm. the rowing machine i don't want to yeah. go on that and like it was horrible but you don't really see that much anymore yeah yeah it's probably also helped the fact that lad bible is no longer super toxic masculinity <laughs> yeah. vibe now they're posting cat videos and yeah. recipes and i love it it's <laughs> excellent not because the fact that it's cats and recipes but purely because it honestly feels like the patriarchy has been dismantled I yeah i love it it's so good to see you love to see it yeah mm-hmm. 
Well, I feel like that's a very good uh, conversation we've just had. Yeah. More uh, questions. I, thought, I, I, I don't even have questions here. This is a note of like uh, where I need to put in things like uh, you, who, what mentions you've had and stuff like that so that I know when to timestamp things. Hmm. Like, oh, bring up this person here in the, in the description. Hmm. But I'm, I'm out of questions. I'm, I'm, I need to sit and digest this now. Okay. This is a that's a lot of information. It's just you telling me to go home. It's not not telling you to go home. It's it's saying that we should uh, wrap this up. We should that's cool. do a part three. Yeah. And if you haven't watched part one, you should definitely watch part one as well. I think part one's a lot more serious than part two. Part two yeah. is longer, but I think that yeah. part one is a lot. I remember watching it back and just being like, "Wow, I am droll. I really do have one tone of voice." I thought it was really fascinating, actually. Yeah. Well, I guess I wouldn't have had you on if I didn't think it was fascinating. That's true. Yeah. yeah. You I'm should, you should do a sense. podcast where you get the most vanilla, boring person yeah. on. And it just would just be me happens. talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> just sit in this chair. <laughs> I think your next episode needs to be just tangents alone. There's no point yeah. just as many tangents. See where oh my god, can we do that? We could definitely do that. Can we do that now? We could definitely do that now. Let's start another podcast and let's just tangent. Start talking to us and then where you end up like Chinese whispers and it's just where the tangent That's cultural appropriation. That could that um, is culture appropriation. You're cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Call it culture. Uh, thanks for watching this episode. And uh, yeah, definitely check out Greg. And thank you very much for check coming on and, and speaking about all this. It's very fascinating, very interesting. I think people are going to find it just I as fascinating so. and interesting as I have. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Cool. Thanks. <laughs>